Hello, my name is David Stewart. I'm with Zero Waste State, and today I would like to take you through a brief tour of Agile 93 by Oracle. Let's begin by logging in as a standard user in the system. You'll notice when the user logs into the system, information is presented to them in a relevant format that may be based on their role or in the organization or in the system. Um, further, information will be presented to them in this tabulated format where notifications can be sent to them, as well as workflow writings where they may be participating in a change order. You'll notice that the application is laid out much like most web browsers, so on the left-hand side you'll have the navigation pane, and on the right-hand side you'll have the standard view pane. The navigation pane will be linked information that allows you to select and present that information on the right-hand side. Um, as well, you'll have standardized bookmark areas and recently visited as well as standardized searches. Now, when you're looking at a, an item, in this case it's a top-level assembly, you can also use a function at the top, for instance, the navigation pane or the navigator will force the bill of material information into the navigation pane and allow the user to traverse the structure and also select relevant information and present it into the standard view pane. If we also look, you have standardized reports that are out of the box for Agile, and these can be customized or created for a company's given related processes or relevant information that can be presented on a daily basis. Um, in this case, we're going to collapse down the navigation pane for now and focus in on just the product structure. So going from left to right, just like we saw with the user's uh, inbox area, you have standardized tabulated information. Now, Agile, the way it works is it configures the system such that the information is all interrelated and linked. So it provides a 360 degree view of the information through the system. So if I'm looking at the bill of material in this case for this item, and let's go to a standard view for this, you'll notice on the left hand side you have linked information that shows whether or not the item has attachments, manufacturers, change orders, problem ports, and a host of other information that can be configured to provide information relevant to the user's uh, functions and roles in the system. If I select one of these items, for instance, let's go into this um, flash prompt, you'll notice that this item has a manufacturer. Now, I know this because it has a related little icon next to it. If I look at its manufacturers and I go into that manufacturer's part number, you'll see the information about the manufacturer part number. As well, if I use where used here, I can go back into that particular component. And so we were looking at this just a minute ago. Now at the top you'll also notice it has breadcrumbs allowing you to go back to the item structure here and back to this bill of material we added earlier. Again, going from left to right, you'll notice that any item or any tab that has an icon next to it means there is something affected against it. So in this case it has changes, has a bill of material, it may be participating in multiple sites, as well as relationships. So items can be related to other items in the system, whether or not they're physical components or related task or design objects, it doesn't make any difference. Um, you can create these relationships or programmatically generate those based on functions in the system. And so it just allows the user to um, define the product structure and related to information in, in a, a more concise format other than just a bill of material. And again, going into the, uh, let's go into the changes area here. So the changes allow you to go in and perform change management on any product structure in the system. So in this case, this item has an ECO against it, and if I select this ECO link, it takes me to the ECO format here. And you'll notice that it looks very intuitive. It's very structured, or structured much like the item is as far as the tabulate information going from left to right. And on the cover page, you'll notice that it has relevant information at a glance. So description of change, reason for change, who the change analyst may be on this particular change order. Now this can be configured in the system to customize per your requirements, but it's just kind of an idea of what you can do here. You'll notice if we have affected items, it'll be presented in the affected items tab. And this would be any items that are related to this particular change, as well as relationships like we saw with the item, the top level assembly earlier. In this case, the relationships may be um, problem related components or reports or uh, changes against this item. And so in this case, this is going to close out this kappa once we've released this change order. The workflow tab allows you to see at a glance the workflow that the, uh, the change order is going to traverse through. If we go back to the affected items, let's take a little more detailed view into some of these. So for instance, you'll notice that this one has a bottom red line against it. If I select this item, it gives me a detailed view below in a split pane, show me the title block as well as the bill of material where there may be a red lines against it. So in this case, maybe I want to add another component. I'm, I'm redlining out two and maybe I'll add one more. 
And so I can go into my folders. I can take um, anywhere I'm finding information in the system. I can just grab that information. In this case, let's grab a demo. This one of these demo parts. Let's grab this glue and drag it in. And so we're going to add this into the common site. And it's going to be redlined into the change order, allowing me to set the fine number and the quantity. Once I'm done with save this, and so I've updated the bill of material. So once this change order has been released, you'll notice that this change order or this bill of material will have this new component in it. And what we'd like to do now is uh, we'd like to go into the workflow and push this on through. Now, I'm currently logged in as a user that doesn't have the rights to push the workflow through. So I'm going to log out and log in as the change analyst so I can push this through and configure the workflow. So with the design manager, if I look at my workflow routings, you'll notice that now I've got this engineering change that's been pushed back to me because I am the change analyst on it. And if I select the change order and look at the workflow, it's telling me that it needs to go to the updated compliance, which is a uh, review state. And so in this case, if I try to push it forward using either next status or the linked icon within the status for the workflow, it's going to request that I put in approvers. Now in this case, we're going to assign approver. And it also has a type ahead in the system. So as I start to type, it'll present anything it finds that's relevant to the, uh, the, the string that I put in. So in this case, project manager one is going to be my prover. I'm going to say finish here. Now again, I'm going to log out and log in as project manager one so we can approve this. And push it on through the workflow. Now, in this case, project manager one may have a different role in the system. So that's why they have a different dashboard that's being presented. But if I go to my workflow routings, that change order that was presented to the design manager and pushed to project manager once for approval goes in my inbox. Now, this information is also going to be emailed to me. And I can either go into Agile and select it from here or go through my email and select the link in the email. So in this case, it's looking for an approval or rejection. If I look at the workflow again, we're sitting at this update compliance. And if you look at the reviewer state down here, it's awaiting my approval. So if I go through and approve it, it's going to challenge me for a password. And typically we'd add comments. I'm going to approve this. So once the approval has been met, you'll notice that the icon has been updated down below in the details area. And I'm going to log back in as the design manager to go ahead and push this on through. Now because I'm the change analyst, if I go back to my workflow writings here, you'll notice that the ECO goes back because it's requiring me to push it forward through this next status. So what you'll see in a minute is after I approve this, it'll automatically go from the change control board into released. Um, and this is based on the configuration of the workflow, which is customizable per your requirements. So in this case, you'll notice that project manager one's approved that everything's been met and I can push it to the change control board. And by default, I selected myself when I set the workflow up to add as an approver. I'm just going to finish this out. That way I want it to log back out, log back in. Again, it's looking for my approval here. And because it's an approval status, I've got the approve button up here. I'm just going to log in and put my password in. And provide comments. Now in this case, because I'm the only approver on this, and I've configured it to automatically release once the approvals have been met, you'll notice that it goes from that CCB automatically into released. And so again, this is configurable in the workflow which Agile has the ability to do. And you'll notice that all the information down below shows that all the approvals have been met. It's currently at released, as well as I can see it up here in the status. The last state here for implementing allows me to go in and incorporate any kind of drawings and detailed information I would want to go through, um, take the users through whatever required actions are, are, are needed there. This concludes the Agile 9.3 tour. I want to thank you for your time and have a nice day.